Well, good evening. This is Bishop Spears again, and we thank you so much for sharing with us. I mean, today is a powerful day. Of course, uh, it's Veterans Day, and we've got so many people in our ministry, in our church, who have served in some capacity at some time. Of course, there are those who are retired and yet others who still serve. Some, of course, who even serve in reserve. And uh, which means I think that they do more uh, once a week, once a weekend per month or something like that. We'll talk more about that. But I am so glad to have you sharing with us. Remember, we started doing what we call Tell Me Your Story. And uh, it's been fabulous just to see God move and work. And uh, we're believing God today. Uh, we've got with us Sergeant Peavy, who is going to be with us. And after we have a word of prayer, we'll dig in and begin this awesome conversation. Thank you again so much for your sharing. Father in heaven, how we bless you, you and Jesus. praise you, God, yes, for Lord. this time. And we thank you, Lord, for this Veterans Day. Yes. We just love you, God, for both men and women yes. who serve and who have served and we thank you, Lord, for their time, for their labor, for their sacrifice, and even what they still do today, God, uh, as a means of connection. Yes. We love you and pray love for you. your blessing in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Man, it is so good to see you. Good to see you, <laughs> Glad Bishop. to have you here, man. It's Veterans Day, and of course... Uh, we're excited about when we start talking about tell me your story, we start putting together a list of names of people. And uh, after one of the early services, uh, we were planning, strategizing. And uh, Elder, Elder Ann Orr said, what about the sergeant? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really two or threefold, man. You, you serve as a deacon in our church and i'm so grateful to god man for who you are and your family and uh man just glad to have you with you with glad us to today be here, Bishop. Glad amen to be here. amen so now you're at um uh, uh north crowley high school north crowley high school and what do you actually do there now at north crowley high school i teach the jrotc from ninth through 12th grade yeah. Yes. Wow, yeah. man. You, I remember old Kyle was in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You helped to shape him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just wonderful, wonderful, yes, wonderful student of mine. Yeah, wonderful. man. And a lot of the kids who are members and, of course, in the community that know you, man, and uh, just they are so proud of you. And what a real blessing, man, it is to have you today sharing with us awesome. on Veterans Day. We've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. But, man, God began to say to me, as we talked a little bit earlier, I was teaching out of Hebrews chapter 11. Right. And uh, in that word, man, God began to talk about who Enoch was and who Abel was, yes, and yeah. who Moses was and Abraham and uh, in that process, these men, of course, Sarah and others, who are who had major faith, they mm -hmm. trusted God in some major places in their life, so much so that they are now listed in what we call the Hall of Fame of Faith. And uh, we're excited about it, man. And God, man, God just had serious conversation about that there are some modern day people, some people in 2020 yes. who've got some amazing stories, man. Yes. And when I started thinking about, uh, I said, man, Sergeant is from uh, Mississippi. Laporte, Mississippi. Laporte, Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. Man, I met mom and the family on yes. different occasions. And so I want to just share with you. I just want to talk to you about a couple of questions and then maybe hear what your story is, you know, how God has blessed you. Uh, yeah. So you grew up in LaPorte. I grew up in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Gulfport, Gulfport Mississippi. Gulfport, Mississippi. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, sports or anything sports like that? Sports, play, play basketball, Bishop, from uh, uh, ninth through uh, 12th grade. Yeah. Yes. And uh, just and after that, decided to just stay in the books. Wow, yeah, wasn't good enough to go to the college level <laughs> yeah. or anything, but uh, yeah, just decided to about my 
11th grade year, decided to on joining the service. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, was there someone in your family? Uh, how did you get introduced? At the time, uh, there are six of us in the family, four boys and uh, two girls. My uh, the sister, the baby sister, she was in for three years. Wow. And she was stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. Wow. And she told me, she said, you need to come up here because I think you can do this. I don't like it much, <laughs> uh, but I think you can do this. And so I got on a bus and rode up there and she showed me around the wow. post and everything. And I began to like it. Wow. And I said, I think I can do this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, how many years were you in? Or what's your status now? OK, I'm, I did 20 years and retired. 20 years. And wow. I'm now going on 17 years in the school system. Wow, man, yes. that's <laughs> yes. I celebrate you for that, man, because that's just you know the role that you play now in uh, helping to groom uh, both young men and young ladies, uh, even sharing with them yes. about as a mentor. You know, yes. um, that's a major piece. We need that today on all levels, man. With yes. so much going on. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's it's, good. it's a continuous service. Right. That's what it is. It, wow. We join the service and right. then we continue the service even throughout the community and the church. Wow, yes. man. Well, you are so right, man. And, uh, your family is made up of, so those are siblings, you know, but you're, you have a wife and children. And yes, I got a wife and I got uh, three boys and one girl. The daughter, uh, Whitney, she is the oldest. And then I have the, my son, Denise. Uh I got two that are teachers. Wow. And the other two, they join the service. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, let me tell you, we had one of the amazing fun times uh, when Whitney got married. Yes. Man. Oh, Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I said, you're going to mess me up with Bishop calling him out here on the Super Bowl Sunday. So. Man, that was a fun time. And I don't know how we did that where First Lady sit beside someone who was a great friend or whatever, but he was watching the game. Yes. And so, you know, she, she playing fantasy football. She right. doing all of that. And so she said that. She said, is that the game? Yeah. yeah. I lost all attraction yeah. and attention. All of that left, man. Right. She was, what's the score? And so around us in that little crowd, everybody said, what's the score? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, oh, we had a ball that that's day. That's great time. <laughs> we had a ball, man. Yeah. And I really enjoyed, man, your son-in-law. He was just, man, we had a great time of conversation. Yeah. So you make sure you tell him I said, hey, I man. I will. I, I will. I love what he does. And he's still working with. Uh, AT&T. AT and T, yes, and he yes. was doing AAU stuff. As AAU, well. AT and T, so yeah. he's been working with uh, young adults also. For My a long God, long time, long yes. time, man. Yes. Well, you got a great family, man. Well, I appreciate. We it. got to talk about mom. You know, yes. uh, I, I pray that mom will get a chance to see this time that we share together. Yes, uh, mom loves the Lord, man. Yes. Just a great woman. And uh, when I got a chance to meet, she's just on fire, man. Yeah. Love the Lord, man. Yes, she does. She she really, would, that was a time when I would come home and tell her, don't ask me to go to church because I ain't going, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she said, all right, you, we'll see. We'll see. But she uh, she really grew up, uh, she grew up in the, uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi. Wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, Joe Madison. I don't know if you ever heard of him on 126. Okay. That's uh, their uh, brother. He's uh, her brother, her dad and his brothers. Uh, uh, they are brothers and they children. Right? Wow. And uh, she's always been in the civil rights. Come on. So yeah. when I grew up, Jesus. I was uh, Jesse Jackson and Ralph Abernathy, all yeah. of them when they used to wear the overalls and all that stuff. She wow. was pulling us into those uh meetings and we will have conventions down in Mississippi where right. you invite Johnny Taylor, you have Jesse Jackson that wrap up. That's when they had those big old afro. Yes, you know? sir. <laughs> so and my dad was SCLC. Yeah. So we were we were we were brought up through civil rights and yeah. we were taught the uh, civil rights and the church at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Mom mom served in the church 
and dad served in the yeah. church. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I really like, man, when we start talking about family, yes. because uh, the course you take in life uh, as a as a human being has much to do with what kind of investment your parents make. Right. Now, everybody has a chance to make it in terms of being successful, having a life that's meaningful yes. and valuable. Uh, but it's a major piece, man, to grow up in that setting. Yeah, that had to be awesome, man. Oh to, man, it to was be awesome. able to see those icons. Yes, you know? yeah. we had we had a lot of things going too. That was unfortunate. You know, we had crosses burned in the yard yeah. and all kinds of stuff. I remember as being as young as when I ran to the end of the end of my street was a highway that went back and forth. Mm. And when I was six years old, I used to be down there. There's a parade down there, and they got hoods on. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I run back home, and mom, that ain't no parade. Get yeah. your butt back up in there. <laughs> you better get back up there. <laughs> get... Yeah, it was a, it was a oh, time. Man. We, we seen it all, and yeah. I had to walk. Because I was within a mile of school, yeah. I had to walk to school every morning. Wow. And so we would catch a lot of at flat going to school yeah. back and forth for the language. So we we've been through some we've been yeah. through some things, but it was uh, to me it helped me to be yeah. the man that I am today. Right. Yeah. You know, and some even today we've got young people who are hearing these conversations for the first time. Right. I mean, the language man, the language of abuse, the language yes. man that people hate language, you know, yes. when people spew out of their mouths, man. Yes. And for young men, particularly, you know, hearing that, you know, we're not in a place where we can take that. And so, yes. you know, we like, man, I'm not putting up with right, that, you know. Right. And so, but to grow up in that, to yes. be able to see that man, it says something about your relationship, you know, with your dad, your mom, yes. but your own personal faith walk because, mm -hmm. You don't come out of those settings. No, you, know. you don't. You know, to come out of a setting like that and to be, to go into the service and first of all, to learn how to love everybody. My right. mom used to always say that uh, color don't make no difference. But we yeah. all do the same thing. Right. We all got certain things going on in our family. Yeah. And uh, don't bring color in my house. Wow. You know? And so to be brought up through all of that, and to come up and learn how to love. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. So you know? you're saying that you saw cross burn. I saw it. So, yes. you know, sometimes we talk about it based upon what we've read right. in books, what we have seen, of course, documentaries. But from a young man growing up yes. in Mississippi, that's something you saw. I saw Do you it. have an experience that you, I mean, other than running to the parade? Yeah. <laughs> Well, when my dad first became, he, my dad was working at an aluminum plant and he was catching a lot of flat. Yeah. And like I said, my mom, she was big in NAACP. And so she told him, she uh, threw all that, you need to run for the president of the SCLC. Wow. And she, do, she really was the one that got him to fighting. But before that, when she first went to her first job, there was a place like it was called Gafers in the South, but it's like Dillard's. Mm -hmm. And when she went to interview for her job, the man told her, in, he said, he, he said the N word, you can't do nothing for me. Yeah. But wash the wash floors. Wow. And back in those days, she had a little old tape recorder on him and she wow. recorded him. Wow. And she ended up taking him to court and she ended up being the head of the lingerie department. Department. Mm. She worked there for 25 years. My God. 25 <laughs> years. She started off making a dollar and 75 cents an hour. Mm. And she was still able to send one kid to, to Morehouse College. Jesus. Dollar and 75 cents an hour. <laughs> and she would save her money. And she we, we talk about we they told a story one time in church because my mom, she had to pick cotton as a child. So she couldn't go to school, you know, make it to school on time. She was, school wasn't fluent with her. Yeah. And, uh, and I asked her, and I was sitting in church at 25 years old. One day I came home from the military, had time to go to church, and they were honoring her that day. And when I heard it in church, I said, why you didn't tell us you got a GED? You had a GED. 
She said, if I would have told you, you would have been going around Jesus, telling people that. My God. That, 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 this, you know, that my mom is doing well. She got a GED. She mm -hmm. said, that's why I never told you. My God. Yes. Man, we got to send love to mom, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I loved her for some reason, yeah. boy. I had no idea. Man, you done messed me up already. Yeah. <laughs> Just an off, yeah. awesome woman. Yeah, awesome she woman. really is. When I the yeah. first time, I mean, she just man, so exciting and so, you know, I just send a shout out to her and of course to yes. your family, your wife, yes. you know, uh, everybody. And so now you uh, you move from Mississippi to uh, Fort Hood. Move from Mississippi to where well, the first thing I do when I joined the service, I ended up in career. And uh, that was my first duty station, Young Sung career. And that was 84, 85. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was not married then, but uh, my wife, wife now, high school sweetheart. Yeah. All right. So I get the Young Sung. We go to Korea, 84, 85, come back to the United States, Fort Hood, Texas mm -hmm. in 87. And I called up and say, hey, we're going to get married. <laughs> but all I want to do is go to the justice of the peace. Yeah. And let and that's all we need to do. We need to do it quick. Yeah. <laughs> and her mom say, no, you come home this, you're going to come home this weekend. This is her mom. She was a powerful woman, too. She yeah. was into politics. And she said, I'm going to go and get the marriage license on a Sunday. And she went and got the marriage license. I came home, married my wife, who was a uh, high school sweetheart then, and married her. And then I took her. And I said, well, we might as well let the military pay for this honeymoon. Let's go to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So we went on to the, we went on to Germany, and it, it was paid for by the military. Well, I know that's right. <laughs> Man, you know, those are, that's an exciting piece, you yeah. know, because the one thing that I often say about military, uh, of course, my um, my my dad's brother served. Yes. Um, uh, my uncle uh, served and then my mother's brother uh, served. Right. And uh, at different eras, you know, different places yes. and times. But man, that travel was just oh. worldwide, oh, you know, yes. broad and and so that that was always the thing, you know, that I always appreciated about the military. You yes. were going to go and travel some oh, places. See man. the see the world. See the world. What are yeah. some places you've been to other than Germany? Well, uh, Hawaii. We lived in Hawaii for three years. I lived in Germany for six years. I also been to Kuwait, uh, England, uh, and those are most of the places yeah. that I've been. Stopped in France and all of that. Yeah. And, uh, Wanted to see you. I passed through uh, a little bit of uh, Dubai, but that was on my way to a uh, Desert Storm, Desert yeah. Shield. Yeah. Man, I've been talking about trying to go to Dubai, Lord have oh, mercy. Man. I understand it's a fabulous place. Fabulous place. You know, and I have to be honest, man, I didn't know nothing about Dubai until I saw Sex in the City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then when I saw it, when I saw them ride up in them cars, yeah, that hotel, oh, man, man, fabulous, beautiful, place. beautiful hotels, yeah. man, the kind of, you know, just met excellent flow. Yeah. I was like, now that's where I want to go. Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't that. stop there long because we had to get on to our wreck, so I didn't have time yeah, to spend a little bit. Right. We moved <laughs> on and we had to move on to the our, uh, to uh, Kuwait. Yeah. And that's where Desert Storm, the, the wow. war. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So now, how long were you in Desert Storm? A year. A year. A, year, a little over a year. Yeah. Wow. We, we, I got that. I landed in Desert Storm. Here's the, the uh, story about that. I was in Germany. Yeah. And that was my second tour of Germany. And uh, we were out one night and they said, get to the unit. You know, yeah. we're, we're going to war. Wow. So I get to the unit and I'm I'm already in the act of PCS and that's called permanent change of station. Yeah. And I'm already in the act. So I'm like, well, I, am I going from here to jump? No, we're going to let you go on the four hood. So I'm thinking that I'm going to miss the war. Mm. And I get the four hood and everybody gone. And they say, you got 30 days of processing. We're going to send you on over. Wow. Man. <laughs> had no, my wife had no household goods. Nothing. She had nothing, and I had to get there within 30 days, wow. train up, 
get her uh, comfortable. By the time we got the household good, there, it was time for me to leave. Wow. And go on over. Yes. Man. Yes. Oh, man. man. I was going to ask. I didn't know if, um, you know, if couples traveled. I mean, what is the extent in terms of if, if you are serving, uh, the extent of a wife's uh, serving in terms of travel? Well, she goes. There are some countries like Korea and stuff like that. You have to get permission. Depends right. on where you get stationed at. Right. You have to get permission for them right. to come over. But she's been everywhere I've been now. When I was in Korea, I was in a great place where they asked I could ask her to come over. She came over and stayed for six months wow. with me. Wow, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Man, that's great. But most of my military career, she's been with me every, everywhere wow. I went. Yes. Man, that's mm -hmm. good. You know, I, I think that the broader your travel, you know, the more advanced in terms of your ability to be able to see the world. Yes. You yes. know, uh, uh, there are people, man, who... Who haven't traveled much they haven't gone a lot of places and so they don't have a good view of life yes but if you've seen a number of places oh, man, man and if 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 your backyard is the only place you've been if the street you live on right. is the only places if the community you've grown up in or the city that you're from is as far as you've been you have no idea no, what life has to offer. No idea. And I talk about that sometimes when with the kids in school, you know, uh, if you that you've been nowhere what you just uh hit on, you don't you don't know. You you start you know, we believe things about culture because of what we're told at home. Right, but when right. you go out there, you know, like one of the myths is all black people eat chicken. Yeah. Well in Germany, <laughs> Everybody eat chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody. They love some chicken. They call it henching over there. Wow. And that was the first place. That's where when you go into the uh, the Costco's and the Sam and you see the chicken bake like that. Well, yeah. they doing that in Germany. Wow. First. Come on. Yeah. Man. The McDonald's have chicken in there roasted like that. Come on, you know, and so they, the, the McDonald's over there in yes. terms of chicken, they don't have just like well, they it, may it, have nuggets, and, nuggets all that, and all that, but the other piece they have that roasted. roasted oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah. And so they eat a lot of chicken over there. It's, again, it's called henching over there, and it's henching. something. It's something about the way they fry. It. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. My God, it's good. It's good. Lord really Jesus. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things that I always say when we get to this in terms of, because I like to hear about your childhood. I like to hear about, you know, your family makeup, man. But I really like to hear about, you know, uh, when you came into the faith and when you came into a place where you accepted Jesus as your personal savior. And mm -hmm. I love also hearing about places where you've really had to trust God. Okay. And so. Well, that's when I say, tell me your story. I love man. Well, I was just telling somebody this story the other day. It was uh, about, it was 1990. You know, always been in and out of the faith, but not like I was yeah. supposed to be. You right. know, I always relied on moms, listened yeah. to her and everything. Right. But what really got me one day, I was uh, on my way to work. And one of my friends called me up and he said, Peavy. He said, we're having this meeting tonight, you know, and it's a it's about God, you mm -hmm. know, that he ain't real. Wow. He said that the be, day before that, he had been handing me handouts where he had this everything that contradicted in the Bible what it said. Mm -hmm. And he said, you coming? I said, I'll let you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I got home and he called me again that night. And it was about an hour before the meeting even started. He said. You come, I said, uh, hold on, I'll call you back. And that's when I got on my knees and began to pray. And I said, Lord, I'm I'm young. I don't know yeah. nothing now, but show me what's right. Yeah. Because I show me, Lord, what's right. And when I got up off my knees, my wife had always had this Bible of a mother, because a mother had passed away while we were in Germany. And the Lord said, Turn around and look at that book back mm. there. And he, by the time I did that, he called back because I hadn't called him. And he said, hey, you going? I said, no, nah, man. He said, well, why are you not going? I said, I got on my knees and prayed about it. Yeah. And God showed me that word. Yeah. And he showed me I need to get into it a little yeah. bit more. 
And wow. that was turned me around right then. And My there. God. Jesus. Turned me around right yeah. then. I said, I'm not, I'm not going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes, man, and I talk about this, and this is that's why this is so important today. One, it's important. It's Veterans Day, you know, and I praise yes. God for your service. Yeah. You know, but you a man, an African American male yes. man, you know, and you come up in a uh, uh, rich heritage in terms of family. Yes. Uh, but I don't often get the dialogue in terms of faith moments yes. with men that yeah. I get from women. Yes. And what you just said, man, you know, you cause a stirring in my spirit. Whoa. I'm like, because that's a piece, man. Young brothers got to understand that God is real, He's that real. God exists. Yes. And then for people who question whether or not God speaks, yes. you know, you just landed on that piece, man. When God said, turn and look at that book. Turn and look. You know, and so that's a that's an important piece, man. Yes, yes, you know, yeah. And so I I really celebrate the Lord in that 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 really confirms why we need to have story time. Yes. You know, a place where man tell me your story oh. because we need not just men but women, and we got to hear some young people. Yes, who talk about their relationship with God, right, man. This, right? And so you know, even as a father, what has that been like? You know. In this season, man. Well, man, as a father, I tell you, I had my son about two weeks ago posted on Facebook. He said, the best man that I know in life Jesus. who talked to me <laughs> religion, taught me about God. And I just happened to look on it. You know, it just sends a vibe to my yeah. children. And then I always tell them when we go out to eat, we do things together. I, I ask the question, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Don't ever get away from believing yeah, in Jesus. Yes, sir. Don't ever get away yeah, from that. Yeah, man. You know? Yes, sir. And so it, it sends a message, you know, and also me being the example right. at the school right. and everything. Because the Bible says it upholds pastors, yeah. preachers, and teachers. And yes. I want to honor that. Yeah. 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 Man, you know, we, we I mean, when I heard uh, this has been, I guess, some months now, you can talk about what it was like, man, when you found out your house had burned. Yes. That's, yes. that's one place where we saw God do some stuff. Right. But just you choose one of the spots you want to well, talk to me well, about. Let me, let me tell you, we were stationed in Hawaii, and it was a beautiful evening. And we said, we're going to go to the beach. And there's this beach called Bellows. Just that name just yeah, makes Bellows. it exciting. Yeah. Bellows. It was on the backside of the Air Force Base, so you had to get, go around to get to it. Well, to further the story, we're out there, and my son, he's a, the oldest, he's 10 years old then, and we sitting in the lawn chairs, and as it get late in the evening, you know how the tide ra rises a little bit. Right. And I can hear him saying, he's like, I, he had this little boogie boy, one of those little, the kids surfboards called a little Malibu boogie boy. Yeah. And he said, I can't catch a wave. I'm trying to ride this thing. And, and I said, well, you doing well? And we got to talking, me and my wife. When I looked up, Bishop, he was about 50 feet. Oh, my God. In the ocean mm. out there. And so all I could hear was, Daddy, 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 come get me. Mm. And I jumped up. I had my, you know, I had my clothes on. I wasn't dressed for the beach. We dressed them for the beach. But yeah. me and my wife, we wasn't. I just started running for the water. And as I, well, as I was going out to get him, the waves would come in and you couldn't see it. Yeah. And then when the waves flatten out, you can, he can hear his voice again. Daddy, yeah. daddy, yeah. daddy. Yeah. Say, come get me. Yeah. And I'm walking out to him. This is an amazing story. Yeah. And uh, I'm walking out to him, but I can see there's a man walking out there to him too. He's, he's going in the same direction. Now, I don't know. I didn't find out this till I, till I got him when we got back. But as I'm going to him, I see this man pick him up in the water and say something to him. But I don't see the man come back my way or anywhere. I just see him walking out to the ocean to pick him up. Mm. So when I finally make it out to put him up in my arms, it's so the waves are so rough. You know, you probably heard that. Uh, 
the story that you walk parallel yeah. to the waves right. when you're trying to make it back. Well, by the time I make it to him, right about five minutes, there's this I, that my wife said happened to be a lifeguard walking up the beach. And he's out coming to get both of us. Wow. And so when I grab my son, he's there too. And he's like, walk parallel, walk parallel, walk parallel to get back. And we make it all the way back to the shore. And when we make it back to the shore, and uh, I ask, I said, did y'all see that man? I, after we, I said, did y'all see that man that was walking? Everybody said, yeah, we seen him. So I asked my son, you know, he's standing there shaking, yeah, nervous. Yeah. But I asked him, I said, what did he say to you? He said, you're going to be all right. <laughs> and, and I asked my wife, I said, did you see that man? And nobody, nobody knew mm. where that man went. It's like he, he never came back to the shore. Now, we knew the lifeguard came and got us. Right, right, right. Boy, when I got home oh, and my told God. my mama that story, she said, boy, <laughs> don't you ever do that again. You wouldn't have been. But I, but I said, but mama. Yeah. Jesus. She said, that wasn't nothing but God. I said, <laughs> she said, that, I said, mom, she said, I said, mom, that man never. Came, came back. My God. He never came back. Jesus. But I watched him. Me and my, my wife, God. we watched him pick him up. My God. Jesus. Nothing Man. but God. <laughs> Nothing but God. Boy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Man. <laughs> when I got him back home to the house, we were just rejoicing. Yeah. Because we said that wasn't nothing but Nobody an angel. But nothing, but a, nothing, nothing but an angel. See, and there are people who don't believe yes. in angels. But man, let me tell you, you're a decorative soldier. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and there's a place, man, when your walk with God becomes real. Yes. You know, the Lord will allow you to see some stuff. You right. know, when we start talking about soldiers in the army of the Lord. Yes. People, man, soldiers of the cross and of faith. You see some stuff. Yes. God will allow you to see some things. Oh, yes. That will, man, just, I mean, move you to a whole different place where you, there's no way you cannot trust in God. Yeah, no way. Yeah. And so just, I mean, just a bit about that house, man. Well, uh, on the house, we were, uh, I'm at school. Yeah. It's about uh, 930. I'm on the deck teaching. Yeah. And I get a call from the neighbor who lives directly down the street from me. He can see that he always watching the house. I'm always watching his house. And when I look at the phone, somebody, well, one of the coworkers say, PB, your phone ringing in the office. So I go in, I grab the phone, and he said, PB, man, your house on fire. Wow. And so I come out to the class, and you know, I'm startled, and I was like, man, my house on fire. He said, you better go. Yeah. <laughs> and so I take off outside the back. I take out out of school, hit that back door. When I get to the to the house, to the road that leads up to my house, it's about seven fire trucks. Mm. I can't get. So I jump out. I can't get the car down. I jump out the car and I just start running. Yeah. I started running full speed. And when I get to the house, you can just see the garage door melting. You know, flames were just everywhere. And so I'm looking for my kids and I see one of them is out there. The baby boy is standing up and he and I'm like, well, where's Keyshawn? Yeah. And he said, I don't know, daddy. I think he went back in to get the dog, huh. you know, so because my daughter, I was keeping her yeah. dog. And he, so Keyshawn went back in. He said, but I don't know if he made it out. Hmm. So we all looking for him to fire men, go back in to look for Keyshawn. I begin to talk to the neighbor next door because he's is like, well, I don't know if I need to move my car. He so he said, I might have to move my car. He walks around the car and Keyshawn is laying on the ground. Come on here. Man. <laughs> and he said, here he is over here, Mr. P. Ben. And it was nothing but God because uh, the neighbor down the street, she's an RN and she's always gone. But some something happened that day that she had, she was just at home, yeah. And wow. she come running down the street and she's running his finger her finger down the stroke, making him throw up and everything. My God. And they so next thing I know he's crying and everything, and they got to 
take him on to the hospital. They, right. they rush him to the hospital. By that time, my wife shows up and everything. And she said, well, I'm going to go on to the hospital with Keisha. You stay here and handle this. And man, that the house was just in flames. Mm. It's just everything, all the way back to the master bedroom. Jesus. And so we just standing out there, and, and then I hear this explosion, propane tank, everything just, just going up and smoking. And I said, man, my God. So I'm just like, well, once they got it under control, got the fire out, I make my way to the hospital to check on Keyshawn to see how he's doing. And he was just, oh, daddy, daddy. Oh man, Dad, I, he's, he's all hysterical yeah. and everything. Jeez. And I was just like, man, it's going to be all right. It's mm. going to be all right. But it was nothing but God yeah. for everybody to be home because the neighborhood is normally, everybody, even my neighbor, yeah. he's normally gone. By the time I leave, he's right. gone. You mm -hmm. know, He leaves at about six in the morning. Yeah. But God turned that thing around, man. He saved my family. Yeah. He restored everything. He yes, brought us Lord. back. He, Brought us back, gave us double for our truck. Come on here. Man, <laughs> he just awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things that's powerful, I, I'm, I'm thinking it was either Deacon Gary Collier or Deacon Johnson. Right. Who got the word to me about the house. Right. And so, um, I mean, as soon as I heard, man, I'm calling you to see. Oh, and, man. man, you were so calm. Yeah. I was like, man, this brother... It's so calm. And God you, is good. Man, you said, man, you taught me to trust God. Yes. Yes, bitch. And man, I worship boy. Because, <laughs> you know, it's sometimes difficult for men to make that connection. You right. know, ain't no shade, no nothing. I mean, just that real deal. And so I praise God for you, man. I praise the Lord for, for what you've been through. And I mean, uh, there's been more and more stories. But what I want today, man, is that you will look at that camera, man. That's somebody yes. who's going through some stuff. And, man, you're not in ministry other than deaconship, but that's ministry in and of itself. And just talk to somebody, man. Just encourage their faith because they, with COVID, man, they got some stuff going on, man. They need to hear a word. I just want to let you guys know, all Jeez. if men and women, that there's a God out there. Jeez. He sees and he knows well. Jesus. He's with us every day. But it's not only also so the fact that we are, that we, uh, he's already chosen us. We yeah. just need to choose him. Yes. Okay. We need to interrupt our daily activities and concentrate on him. Yeah. All right. We shouldn't go, be going through the day. Bishop taught me this. Yeah. You ought to wake up and say, God, love, God, I love you. God, I thank you. We have to honor him every day for what, just for what he's done in my life. Yes. You know, he a boy from coming from Mississippi, poor, didn't have anything, but being raised in Christ and to come here to Fort Worth and for the Lord to show me this church. I have been to three churches before I landed here at First St. John, and Bishop, he's a man of the word. Studying taught me how to study, taught me how to lean on God, and I lean on it every day. I tell my kids at school, you have to put God my on your God. mind. God Jesus. is in charge of your whole body. You yes, have to put God. him in charge of everything. Yes. And when you ask him and you lean on him and you put your trust in him daily, yes. there's nothing that he won't do for you. My God. So I'm, I'm here to tell you this, no matter what you're going through. Yeah. You, Trust God. Yeah. Lean on it. Jesus. Use him every day. Talk to him just like you would talk to your friends. Yes. And he'll he'll be there. Yeah. In moments time. You got to try. I told my mom the other day, you got to trust God to the last second. Yes, Lord. <laughs> you got to trust him to the last second. Jesus. He's amazing. Yes, he is. Yes. Man, you know, one of the things that's so powerful uh, is that it's that kind of word you know, that, that transitions and it has a way of manifesting in the life of people. Yeah. And I, I'm just so grateful, man, for, for the walk that you have with God. And I really want to encourage everyone, man, if you don't have a relationship with God, you need to make sure yes. that you get that right. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, yes. the Lord Jesus, you can be saved. And so we believe that. Yes. Um, I've been walking with God a long time. As a matter of fact, I talk about that sometime. 
from a child. Yes. You know, I was just reflecting this morning over prayer, uh, the people that God had in my life yeah. to pray for me. And those are people are no longer here, but they taught me yeah. enough about prayer that, man, my relationship mm. with God has done nothing but gotten stronger. Yes, yes. And so I want to make sure that, that we take time to do this. Anybody you know that's been affected by COVID? Uh, well, uh, yesterday my wife told me uh, that the neighbors across the street, the whole house been infected mm -hmm. by COVID. My God. Yes, and they so they saw uh, they are uh, husband and wife and three children. Jesus. Yes, and wow. she said we've been down sick, and mm -hmm. she said, "Oh, this thing has got us down." Yeah. Yes. What's mm -hmm. their name? Uh, they uh. Let me get it right. Uh, oh, Lord. That's uh, all right. Rachel, right? Do set. Do okay. set. Do set. set. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to just pray for them right now. Yes. Uh, they may not be watching, but there are other people who are sharing who have had COVID. They've mm -hmm. had cancer. Yes. Different ones who had diabetes, bad heart conditions, and just different problems. And so I want to pray just a moment for them. Yes. Lord, I bless you and praise you for yes, the two Lord. sets. And I thank you, Lord, uh, for, for Deke and his wife yes. and family, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for the wisdom you shared through him today, just from childhood to now adulthood. Yes. And then I bless you, God, for these families. I pray healing over that family. As a matter of fact, God, I yes, pray over Lord. every house on that street. Yes, Lord. I pray right now in the name of, Jesus, the name of Jesus that you will bless every home on that street. Yes. Heal in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we declare your glory. We declare yes, that you Lord. are a healer yes. and that you are able to do supernatural things. Yes. And so I pray right now, not just for that street, but Every family, yes, every Lord. household, yes. every entity of, of individual that is connected tonight, do something special in their life. I pray, pray God that your anointing will settle on their life right now, that you will transform yes, where they Lord. are so that they are able to sense your presence and your glory yes. in the wonderful name of Jesus. Wonderful name we of bless Jesus. you, God. And praise you now. Amen. 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 So, man, listen, let me just share. I know you heard about we're getting ready now on Saturday to yes. do a deal with the uh, food man serving. That was just a major call we received between 1,000 to 1,200 foods. Awesome. That's amazing piece, yes. man. And so... We really are excited about that, and yes. we want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to participate because maybe you're not in need, but you can volunteer. Yes. You don't have a need in terms of vegetables or food like that, meat. Uh, maybe God has been awesomely blessing you, and I believe that he has. But because there are families that are in need, get that word out. Yes. There's no restriction. We want to make sure... Uh, that we get it done and that we do it in a fabulous way. We already have a plan in place that we're working on. Everything is coming together. And so we really are excited about that, yes, man. Yes, I'm and, excited and I'm planning on being. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so let me also share, which is exciting, is that um, I know this is uh, also flu season and we've had flu shots that that we've had connected to our ministry, uh, but we were able to get other flu shots to be okay. here on campus. And so we'll have that in place as well. Saturday is just going to be a festive time. And uh, so we encourage you, if you need a flu shot, call the office at 817-534-0581. And someone will give you information on what time that's going to be, how we'll flow with that. But, just, man, we're just excited about what God is doing. And I'm telling people, man, you know, these things that are happening, these are not things we, we have appealed for. These yes. are not areas of doors that we have petitioned for. Right. These are things, man that God is doing oh, is nobody but God. Nobody and I'm excited about it. 
The Lord has dropped this word in my spirit about the glory of God. Yes. I'm working now putting in place that word for Sunday because I believe that if we can measure we can mm. really understand what the glory of God yes. is all about. God will move in an awesome way. Yeah. And we can experience his presence. Yes. His presence now. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven. Mm. We can experience yes. the glory of God now. And so I'm encouraging you to make sure you connect with us. And then listen, do this for us. We're praying for families. We're praying for salvation. Mm. So we're encouraging you to make sure we have a Zoom call where people can call in, have prayer. They can have the plan of salvation explained to them. We've got a wonderful team of individuals who are working that process, and we're excited about that. But then let me encourage you. Uh, normally, in any setting, in a regular, normal time, there's a place where we give. And I want to encourage you. We haven't really uh, beat or even begged or even asked in terms of giving as it relates to midweek. But I want to encourage, I want to challenge you that if that's what you have normally done in terms of sowing and giving through our midweek, either on Monday or Wednesday, let's start back doing that. Let's do that so that we can do some things as it relates to the upkeep of both buildings, both facilities, we're doing our very best so that when when we come back, and I believe that God is going to bless us to come back together, a lot of that stuff will already be done. Yes. And so we'll believe in the Lord for that. And I just want to thank you. Let me take the moment to say thank you for your connection. I yes. can't over express the prayers you pray, man, the texts that I get, phone calls here, as a matter of fact. Uh, my office phone here at the church is so overrun with messages. Every time I clear that mess, those messages out, they feel right back up. Mm. And so it says something about the kind of love that you provide of encouraging your pastor. Yes. And I love you much. I can't help but shout about that. The fact that Senator <laughs> Kamala Harris yes. was on the property of First St. John Cathedral, and she is now vice president-elect. Yes. Man, history was made mm. in Fort Worth, Texas on Berry Hill, yes. and we are excited about it. You already know, I'm already praying now for that old inauguration. Lord have mercy. I need the weather to be right. I need COVID to be gone. Thank so you, that I Jesus. can be in place. You know, yeah. any invite to pray or whatever, man, I'm going to put my gloves on, my boots on, my mask on, double yeah. mask. Yeah. And I'm headed to D.C. if it be the will of God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. <laughs> Nobody, you know, I hear that word. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into yes. the hearts of men the things that God has done for us. And so I want to thank you. I praise God for you. I bless you. Listen, I pray that God will bless you greatly. I'm asking Lord to make his face to shine upon you, to be gracious to yes. you, and that the Lord will bless you with amazing, loving peace until we meet again. Thanks again to Deacon, Sergeant Deacon PV. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. <laughs> for sharing with us tonight. Yes. We love you and praise love you. you until we meet again the next time. God bless you. God bless.